Yo. Hi, Carlos. Nice to meet you. Since you're the first person, you can help me figure out what we should draw then. Also, I think it's a six second latency delay, so I probably won't see your messages quite quickly. But thanks for being the first first one to pop in. Do you think that you would want to learn? Oh, shit, there's a lot of people coming on now. Oh. Hi, Dana. Ciao, Brad Ciao, Bradero. Bradero. Sorry. Thanks, thanks, guys, for popping in so early and filling up the, uh, the area. It's my first live stream, so it's going to be... I'm not fully sure on what I am doing at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to kind of like do some simple painting. If people want to learn like the basics of just how I paint, I want to probably do it real quickly and let people like figure out. I definitely recommend if you guys have a, like your laptop or Photoshop on you, like come just do it along with me. I probably won't be using really any like special brushes or anything like that so it's just going to be just real basic stuff definitely think that you guys should try and just come join me and paint with me on the same thing still don't know what i'm going to paint yet though so i'm just currently i think it has to be quick i don't want to do anything that will like take like five hours obviously probably do something that can be taken that could be painted within like the hour or something and I don't know what I want to paint yet. I'm just thinking like a view of like a giant block head. Like that, like a little earring. Just real goofy and then just shade him like crazy. I feel like that could be really fun. Should have probably warmed up also beforehand. <laughs> Will this be recorded? Uh, I really hope it is. Uh, it seemed like it was recorded when I did the tests. Um, but I know that like trying to edit the recording, it was getting a little weird. So it should be it should be fine. I think this is not going to probably be the the last one that I'll do. I'm gonna, this is like a test run to see how it like just how this uh if this is like something that I really want to keep doing, but uh. If people are really interested, I'll probably do more of these anyways. So I wouldn't really worry too much. Uh, I took your C4D class and changed my perspective. Thanks. Damn. I'm surprised. Thanks for taking that class and spending the money. I if yeah, Carlos, if you if you want to if you want to learn more about that, I'll I'll I can uh I can uh definitely maybe go over that sometime another time again. I feel like that class, I wish I could like changed a few things on it. Uh, but you know, you know, there's, I think that was like a few years ago and I, I definitely was like, I, I wish I, I, uh, I wish I did a little few different things on it. Cause I, I think, uh, I limited a few people, but it was, it was a fun domestica was fun to work with. Yeah. Hi Bryce. Z Leonard excited to be here for the experiment. Oh man, the experiment. Oh, I'm nervous now. It's, uh, I, I guess it is kind of be kind of experimenting. I can't fuck up. I feel like I'm not the most consistent person. So it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a fun, you're going to see me probably be like, oh, maybe this will work or something like that. I feel like, I feel like I probably have a system down and I don't realize it, but I definitely feel like I always change things all the time. What do you guys think I should draw? I definitely can use like a prompt. It needs to be something probably simple. So right now I'm just like doing, I was just doing like a simple shapes right now because I could easily just start going in and start shading these real quickly. But that might be too quick. 
Liam. Wait, is that Liam Archibald? Liam! Or is that a different Liam? Well, either way, hi, Liam. I don't know if that's a... Oh, it is actual. Oh, nice. Nice. I'm so glad you're you're here to support me, man. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, I think maybe I will do... Oh, wait, what time is it? 6.51? Do this, this latency. I guess it is... I don't know how long it takes for uh, that excellent V V Yano. Nice. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. I'm gonna need to have like a gallon of water next to me this whole entire thing. Maybe a silly dinosaur. Yeah, let's do oh, you know what I could do like a dinosaur. And then we'll just give him like a bunch of tattoos. A big smile. Can't have him be so like sad and everything. That could be awesome. That's actually a good one. Maybe we will do this. We'll do a dinosaur. Almost like a stuffed animal dinosaur too. Now we can get. Yeah, it could be fun to paint. Like teach about like how to paint those like fatty flesh like the the weight of something you know when you like you draw something you want to show like that weight or that like flesh hanging off kind of thing and i feel like this dinosaur could really could really do that probably be a gro that'd be a fun a fun gross but cute i never try to go just too gross all the time i try to go a little bit try to balance it a little bit I wonder if I should do, I kind of wonder if it'd be more fun to do something that's like, almost more like a children's drawing though. And like the legs are, this might be a little weird. Hmm, actually no. Hmm. Do I want it like that? Or do I want it like... The head example was good too. I could, yeah, I could def that would that would probably definitely fit within the time. I know that. Oh man, I don't know, dude. Dinosaur is also just so so fun though too. Let me try to just paint it, like do the drawing of the dinosaur and see how this looks. I just want to be able to like, see how it like fits within the frame. I wonder if he's got like a almost not like a broken neck, but like. He's like kind of folded like his finger, like it's a finger almost. Loch Ness Monster. And then he's like arched up like this. So he's really fitting in the composition. And then. Oh my god, it's like classic. Like all these studios that italicize their design work. I don't know why is that like a thing that people notice. I feel like every motion graphics is like italicized. Why I just attacked a bunch of people. Whoops. Oh, I tried to get that leg down. And think about like how the negative space like this right here mm, that's could be let's compare yeah i kind of like this one a little bit more it's just like a little bit more maybe 
actually maybe not italicized that much. It's definitely not where the tail goes. Hmm. I think this one maybe would be kind of cool. And then we'll do, actually, then I'll draw a head too. And then maybe you guys can say, like, if you want a head or a tattooed dinosaur. Although I do think that it should have, like, a little, a little volcano in the background. Maybe a little bit of cloud to balance out the composition a little bit. That could be pretty, that could be a fun, simple one. Oh yeah, let's get the tattoos on. Oh my God, classic eye drop. Let's do the barbed wire. I love the bar barbed wire. Hi Alex, yo, Ines, why is <laughs> why is he drawing a portrait of me? What the fuck? Oh no. I think this is a very cute dinosaur though. Don't don't feel too bad. What if he was smoking a cigarette? Tough time for dinosaurs right now. Actually, yeah, like get a little dangly cigarette right off the side. I mean, yeah, dinosaurs. They did all die out, and it wasn't the volcano that killed them. It was lung cancer. Oof, sorry, that was dark. Brutal. Don't smoke. I used to smoke, and now I don't smoke anymore. It's a, it was a 3D modeled. It's so well done. Oh no, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I am. Uh, uh, I am. A, I do do 3D modeling, uh, but I also paint. I don't. I don't. I just. I probably go over this actually. It's like I kind of do whatever I'm. Keep myself from being bored. So it's like for like two weeks, I might be really into painting, and then I might be like, "Oh my god, I can't do this anymore," and then I'll go into 3D modeling. One last sake for extinction. Like have it just burning out, like right in the end. Cause it's like, it's his time's coming up near. The volcano is about to explode. Oh, and the t yeah, the teardrop does kind of, kind of just adds another meeting. I feel like it'd be the T-Rex that would have the teardrop, but damn. Need <laughs> more lore on this guy. Oh yeah. I mean, that's where it's like, Oh yeah, I have like, I was doing like, uh, yeah, let's see, I was doing like, this is like kind of the stuff that I was doing before. It's like little tattoo stuff. And yeah, it's like, I was playing around with like these flesh studies. It's just like whatever I can just draw on it. It's sometimes it gets really, it gets a little, uh, I just like don't know what to draw for the tattoos sometimes and I just keep going to my basics. This is just me just like goofing off for like an hour. Dying I'm alone. I thought your art was it. Photoshop light must be mode is crazy. Oh yeah, I forgot. People don't use light mode. Am I like the only one that uses that? I wonder if people like hate that I use that. It's like somebody pointed that out and they thought I was like insane and I didn't know that I was like, I was like not in the norm. My bad. Sorry if this is uh, you're on your, if you're gonna be anybody's uh, nighttime and they're like just sitting there on their phone in bed, it's like blasting them in the face. Or it's just lame, I don't know. Is it just lame? I kind of feel like, oh shit, I just realized I don't have like, how do I get like the little, it's like getting crammed in the frame now. Oh no. I feel like a hairdo. 
kind of style it like that. But then I feel like we need a little bit like, hmm. Oh yeah, and then I got now it's like seven oh one live stream is now officially started. I might that was extinct too. Yeah, no. I might do oh and I'm gonna draw drawing a face. But uh let's do let's keep this one saved and then I'm gonna do a quick sketch of a face. I kinda want something that like will fit in the frame. I keep doing like the hey Arnold head. And I, I always like draw like these big these big ears like this. And I'm like yeah, I like just like really want to like deck them out with some like if you ever want to like learn how to paint metal, I can like definitely teach you something here if I like give them some jewels and shit. Cause metal's like actually easier than people it like looks intimidating, but it's actually not too bad. Like I feel like since I work in CGI, what puts this stream on YouTube for a rewatch? That is the goal. I hope I can get this up on live stream or uh, like all up afterwards. I did a small test for like a, a quick like one minute video and it said that it was up and I just have to make it public. So I guess that works. Also, you guys let me know if I'm like, cutting out and everything because I have no idea if my internet oh shit I should have restarted my router oh well okay it's too late now uh yeah so we'll see just how this goes and everything and hopefully like no internet the internet will not cut out on me and then you guys will all leave and everything you might do a hey Arnold oh he needs like a hat though on top of this shit because it's like it doesn't like that's like being too crunched up there. Maybe it's like a hairdo. You guys can give me suggestions on anything and I'll like start drawing it and then we'll decide like what to paint. I think like right now the top choice is his dinosaur though. Dinosaur covered in tattoos. I, I didn't like finish the tattoos. What are like some tattoos that they put on? I guess it would be like It'd be weird to have like a dinosaur bone. Maybe it'd be an asteroid. That's pretty badass. That might be weird, but we'll see how that works. You're coming in loud and clear. Thank, thank God can hear and see you crystal clear as long yeah I'm, I'm definitely worried if the my internet cuts out our service provider has been having like the worst time with uh i don't know i think after the earthquake it like met so i live in bushwick in new york and we had the earthquake in new york and i guess like somebody posted on reddit that like it kind of messed it, it messed up like with some people's internet uh the internet provider and also like my router was like seven years old. The last time I was supposed to do a live stream like two weeks ago and I never got to it because it was Easter and uh, I was ill prepared. My router was like cutting out every hour. So I just said, screw this, I'm not doing this. So today's the day. Am I coming to Picto? No, I can't come to Picto. I try to get uh, tickets. Uh, I could probably hit up Peter and Lars and just ask for tickets. Uh, Cause I'm like, I feel like they, they owe me some things, but you know, I, that's just, I know I'm a little sad that I won't be able to come because there's a lot of really good speakers there. Oki Meg is going to be there. Joseph Melhush, if you guys know, I can also show it. Yeah, yeah, people should. I'm going to like, you like follow these people. Instagram. I think some of the speakers are just Melhush. People know who this guy is. He's going to be speaking in Berlin. And there's going to be a huge... If people don't know what Pictoplasma is, it's like a huge convention in Berlin. And it's like a, just a bunch of illustrators and animators. And it's just like a fun a fun blast. Just drink 
every night and and hang out, meet people that you really like are fond of with their work and everything. And so they they have a few people who speak. They have you know people who submit their animation work, and they do like a giant theater. And it's gonna be like you know Joseph Mellish is one of the speakers, and then Bookie Mags. Yeah, he's also a friend, and he's gonna be also speaking. I wonder if, if Chris is gonna be on the. I don't know if Chris is gonna be here. He's so sad. I'm really sad that I won't be able to support. I was like, do I send him like? I want to send him like. He's he's been to like both my my uh my talks and i i feel so bad i feel like i need to get him something like a like a nice gift basket or something a gift basket of fruit i don't know if that's weird but it'd just be nice to get because I, I feel bad that he's speaking and i won't be able to see his thing okay right what am i doing let's go back uh So we got this one. Oh yeah. My basic hairdo. I should probably just get right into painting actually. Dan Knight, since you're the you're the one that's uh you should just ask Peter and Lars. Yeah, it's too late anyways. Um, but it's okay. I hope you have fun, though, if you go. Uh, should we just go and start painting the dinosaur? Since I think you're the you're the creator of that idea. We'll do, we'll do that one. Okay. So I don't know how many people are here because my stream does not show it. So I don't know who's, who's going to be chilling at the moment um but i'm going to start going over the uh painting process and i'm just going to start just hopping into it this might be pretty sloppy for the time being uh this is why i was going to do something really simple because we could get it done and get it done within like an hour or something but this one we could probably whip up pretty quickly too hopefully let's see let's see okay so if i'm going to start painting Let's uh let's first let's hide my sketch. I don't need to really refine it. I think it's fine for right now. I'm gonna keep it on like a gray background. Oh yeah, if people oh if people are here, I definitely recommend if you wanna like paint along with me, like do your thing. It's you know, the whole idea of like painting and stuff like this is a it's relatively like a lot of it is kind of just based off like these rules that you can just kind of apply to anything. So it's like Feel free to just, if you want to do something simple, like just paint a sphere, like do that. But like, if you want to paint like a dinosaur or like paint against my T-Rex, like do, or paint with a T-Rex and go against mine, like that's cool too, you know? Do something however, whatever you want. But I'm just going to teach you like what I do for like this. So I'll do like with client work and stuff like that, I'll do like, give them like a sketch like this. And then, you know, they'll, it doesn't, they don't even need to be like super clean, honestly. I feel like clients... There's some there's some, some amazing artists who don't even turn in like the cleanest sketches, but they turn in the most amazing art. Um that's just, you know, it's all good. I'm actually pretty neat with my sketches, but this one I'm just gonna keep it loose. So I'm gonna just do a sketch like this, keep it, just group these right now, lock it, and then I'm gonna start what I do when I start painting, I don't usually do a new layer like this this is where people i get people the most like what the hell like you know they're going like oh you just you know start painting with a brush like this i don't do that um and i'm probably the only person who doesn't do that so this is going to be something new for like everybody so let's just make sure i have everything yeah yeah yada yada let's turn smoothing on a little bit so what I do is I go to down here, there's this little circle thing that looks like a moon. And then I press solid color layer. And then I can just like choose any color I want. So I can be very specific. And then the color goes into like my swatch palette. So it'll be like my most recent used colors. 
and be watch late. Uh, yeah, I think it's just, hopefully it will be, yeah, it's hopefully it'll be able to be watched later. Don't worry about that. Thanks, Anastasia, though, for the concern. Uh, so yeah, I just do this and then I make a mask. Oh yeah, click on the mask and just invert it. And now I just simply can just paint like that. And that way, if I like want to change my colors, I just go here and then I can just change whatever I want for my colors. Like it's, it's essential. The reason why I do this is because I, there's things called destructive workflows and non-destructive workflows. And to me, this is a very nice non-destructive workflow flow for like, if I have to like make color edits, cause I get very like nitpicky and I'm like, maybe I, I, the colors that I thought were working aren't instead of like getting really sloppy with my files and then having to like, uh, essentially put a bunch of like, do a bunch of hue saturation. And then, you know, over time it gets destructive. For example, if you, you know, people probably have done this, they go like, they paint like, okay, I'm going to paint like this, this red, oops. I'm going to paint this red thing right here. And then they press like command U and they go, okay, I actually want it like white or something like a, this like pale color or something. Let's do white. Now it's like, okay, but if I wanted to make it like a different color, it's like, Actually, that did already go back to it. But if, say if it went to white, <laughs> say if you, I think if you know what I mean though, if you say if you turn it to white, and you want to turn it back to like a different color, like you can't now because it was through an, a destructive process. So I try to work non-destructively. So if people, if you know the client needs changes, if I want to make changes, I can easily come like right into it and just make those changes, no issue. Okay, so that's why I, I like to, me personally, I like to use this way. It doesn't, it's not easy to get very painterly by using this, uh, this method, I will say that. So it's like, if I have this and then I do like another one like this, they're gonna be on, you can't have two color layers on the same layer. They have to be on two different layers. So if I like wanna blend them, it gets a little bit tricky, but I'll, this is just how I do it, you know, so you'll see. Okay, so let's delete that, create a new mask. And then I'm going to just start like coloring in my dinosaur. And, you know, I don't feel like this guy needs to be like super... Maybe if I'm like, we'll divide things maybe into shapes. So, and then I like to press then, you guys won't, this is a hotkey that I made myself where you like, you can fill it in, but I like to press alt and alt click on the mask. And then, let's so yeah, make sure that my magic wand is, there you go. Magic wand and then say, expand my selection, and then now I've automatically filled in my selection like that. Just how I do it, you know? It's a little hotkey I made, it just simply just say, it just literally goes to select. I think it's a, I think it was select, and then, or is it like modify or whatever? Select, yeah, it was, I think it was like select and modify, and then it said like grow or something. And then I just made that into an action in a hockey. So I'm going to call this for right now dinosaur skin. And this is where labeling can kind of come handy. I'll teach a little bit about that. So I'll just keep anything. I'm going to have everything. Actually, let's call it dinosaur skin local because I work how I work. I work with building up some, you know, artists, they work black and white and then they color on top. I do the opposite. I think there's a lot of artists that either go either way so it's like a lot of artists go uh black and white and then put colors on top and then use blending modes with those colors on top i'm like an artist who uses a color on the bottom like a base color so if, like you say like an apple is red a leaf is green you know like that type of thing this hat is a pale yellow you understand that that's the local color and then you build up the shadows on top of that and the lighting on top of it so 
that's essentially like all I do for like all my paintings. And that's like one of the basic fundamentals of this entire process. It gets a little bit more complicated with things like glass and stuff like that and hair, but you know, that we can come to that in, in later. So local, so I say like dying skin local and dying skin local. And then I'm just gonna keep painting. And then with, now that I've actually had this labeled though, I will say it will make my life easier when I have like a million layers and I can just literally type in, in my panel, what I want to look for, for a layer. If you have it labeled, you can just go here and say name. And I just say Dino skin local and it pops up right there. And then I can hide all my other layers. Little trick right here. Let's hide that again. Cause I don't want the, I want to see my other stuff. Cool. I'm gonna also just change it a little bit so I can like see the difference. Let's do the legs now. Let's do Command J. Again, just kind of change it so I can see it for right now. Oh man, maybe I should have done the face. Might be a little, this might get a long stream. I think this is one of the reasons why people who are very painterly, they probably are very quick. I'm not really slow, but I'm also not very quick compared to some of those like concept artists who are like, they're just like so fast at what they do. And I'm like, I think it's, they just kind of paint things. I think that's where the destructive layer process is nice for people is because you can probably do things really quickly. You just go in and start painting versus mine's like setting up a file so that I can make changes later easier. Cool. Let's... And then let's do two little back legs. I'm not going too fast for anybody. Do you ever use Procreate? Uh, I used to use, I don't know how, sorry, it's like I got super zoned in. Uh, I used to use Procreate actually quite often when I was, uh, I think it was a few years ago, but um, now that I have like a Cintiq, like I just kind of prefer to use Photoshop at this moment. Procreate, when I was talking about destructive and non-destructive workflows, like Procreate really uses destructive workflows. It is a great app though, but it just doesn't fit for me personally. I love it for sketching, but if I had to do like full rendered pieces, I think then I run into some issues. But, you know, it's a great app though, especially for like, like uh, I don't think there's any Adobe representative here, but like fuck Adobe, like they're, they just keep, raising the prices on everything and you're just like and they're just throwing in like ai photo bashing shit and you're just like okay this is not really like what i want for like painting but yet again they don't really technically photoshop's not really meant for painting there it's just more like it's photoshop but you know they i think they keep going like Oh, you want to do illustration, then use Illustrator or use Fresco. And, you know, Fresco is actually pretty cool, but like, you're, you're just like, yeah, that fits for like a specific niche. But like, if I want to be like painterly, I can't be painterly in Illustrator or you can, and it's like, be a freaking nightmare. Be so hard to do that shit. Are you creating the new layers? Yeah, sure. I'll do it. I'll go over it again. So to do a new way, like to do these like color layers. All I do is I go down here, you see this little moon, click on it and it'll say solid color. So just to go over some of these things, these are non-destructive adjustment layers. Uh, so for example, if you have the, this is where Procreate can't do this. This is, this is why I like Photoshop. 
So for example, let's say I have an, a piece and I'm like, okay, I'm going to throw, uh, I want to like change the contrast and I'm like, it's getting a little dull. I can do this and, you know, be like, okay, now I've like made it more bright and contrasty. But then I go, oh no, I have to like repaint things. It doesn't matter because it it's on its own layer. I can hide these effects. In Procreate, you have to like flatten everything if you have to like adjust the contrast and then you know make it make an archival duplicate kind of thing and then flatten it and then you're like but then if you want to like re go back into say like an older version you're like it's it gets messy so it's like this is just like a simple layer click you know so that's like the that's like the reason so here i'm using just the solid color layer under this little adjustment layer icon the blue moon and it just literally comes like this and you can just change your color to anything you want. And then from there, I just alt click into my mask and you can just kind of paint anything like that. Oh, it's like an invert. So it like makes more sense like that. Super easy. And I thought I worked in an undestructive way. What's the, what is an undestructive? I like, I'm curious because I feel like technically like mine is destructive in some ways too it's like i don't know i've i've since i've been working so much also in um cinema 4d and working with procedural materials where you just go it's like working with nodes and you go oh, okay i want to make like a, a scaly texture and it's like it's kind of nice to be able to have something you can just apply to anything and you just have to change some sliders around and it changes things and you're like it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, I don't know, I just, since I was doing that in there, I just kind of made me think about doing it here too. And like, what can I do where I can just change some sliders and just change stuff? And you'll see it in a sec. Okay. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta start painting this, this shit because you guys are going to be like out of here if I, if I take too long, but be like, can you like get to the actual shading part? I'm like, I'm sorry. I will. I'm going as fast as I can. Okay, let's do that. And then let's do... Do that. And then let's just darken that one again, just so I can see it. And then... I think the last one would be, you know, I, I should actually like separate this head. So got actually a lot of layers on here. Uh oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a long painting. Hope you guys are ready for that. I don't know if people are like just here for a casual check-in view or if they're going to be like fine staying up till 12 in the morning painting with me. Get some coffee. It might be a long one. Okay, let's do that. Oh, I got to get the turn on auto select layer so I can click on any layer that I want. Otherwise, that would be, that's make my life a little bit easier. Cool. I think that's actually like, oh yeah, then I got to paint. Let's do the scales. I'll do the background. Let's do the dinosaur first, and then I'll do the painting you know, the background. Just so we can like get right to the shading. Because the shading's the fun part anyways. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm like not a person who like, likes to sit and like do a bunch of sketching. I just kind of like want to go right into painting. I know some people love like probably like the drawing aspect, but I am personally like less into drawing. Let's do that. Select the layer and then just erase it. And now we got a clean, clean shape like that. Close enough. Oh, Ben. <laughs> ben. Yeah. Thanks for joining. Mm 
There's a lot of blocking out in 3D. It is, you know, my process is like very similar to 3D and you'll see it soon. Like, I think because I, when I learned, when I was learning Cinema 4D, there was just like a lot of things in there that were like, you're essentially separating things where you're going like, okay, uh, people who work with CGI, like Blender or anything like that, you've probably heard of things called AOVs. And an AOV is like separating the lighting into files and then you're using like blending modes to combine them into com in in comp so like you could be like okay i want like this picture like this apple and you render it out you can like separate the shadows and then say multiply the shadows on top and then do like oh here's the highlights then you press you know use additive or whatever whatever the blending mode is like add and then you put that on top of the apple and it's essentially the exact same thing here and you'll be like Oh my god, why 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 did I not ever do that before in the past? You'll be amazed. Oh yeah, so what I'm doing, I'm just like I like to like a lot of times like press control and then click on the masks and then control shift or control alt or whatever and then you can select things. You see oh and I'm probably I'm just realizing I'm like people don't know these hotkeys. I try to get the, the keyboard shortcuts. Uh Q is quick mask, uh, which is essentially just shows what I masked out and then, and you know, and so right now I'm just press Q and then inverted it and then press Q again. That way I can just paint only on the outside. Even though this is a layer above everything, it's not going to go now into my, into my dinosaur. So you'll see it's like, like that, but it's okay. I think if I was, uh, if I was uh, doing this over like a course of like a day or so, I'd be a little bit, a little bit neater, but you know, whatever. It's all good. In the end, it's just probably going to get posted on social media and nobody's going to be able to tell the difference on those little details. Wah, wah. Okay. Those are like some little spikes. You know, just I guess they'll be like subtle. They won't be like anything too too outrageous. Eh, you know, whatever, close enough. Oh, and then let's do the eye and then shading. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do like little beady eyes like this. so cute it's like a stuffed animal but it's gonna be like fleshy but it has like the body of a stuffed animal like it doesn't even make sense also i think that everything needs to get like shifted over maybe a little bit like kind of eyeballing it and going like yeah i guess it's like close enough Can't really tell. Things can be shifted later. Hide that again. Delete, delete. Oh, no, another thing that's nice if you saw a color. So, for example, say you want a background. I'm just going to turn it to red. Normally, if you do something like this and then uh, say, you know what, let's, let's hide this background and we'll have this normal background here. You might go like, okay, I want to expand my thing. But now you have like PNG. It's like transparent. So instead, I just use a solid color layer, and now I can make my background, you know, any size I want. And it will just convert it because I, I just took the mask out of this color fill layer. And now it's a, I have an infinite background. Just, like, nice to have if you have to change sizes on anything. Just, like, the little things like that. Just make sure you have to delete the mask is all. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Let's change the dinosaur. Let's make the dinosaur let's do like a, a basic color. Let's like do a blue right now, and then we'll like change the colors later on. Swatches, dinosaur, dinosaur local, and then let's like label it I local, spikes local, and then we'll change it to be like just a little bit darker. 
for right now. Okay, so let's get to the shading. What I'm going to do is move this one up. I'm going to send everything into a group for right now. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to put everything into a group. And then I'm going to create another solid color layer. And I'm going to do like just a warm color for right now. I like to use warm shadows and cool lighting. It's just how I personally like to do things. But, you know, just how I like to. I feel like since I do a lot of soft shading, using warm light can look a little weird for me on it. Um, I think it's because the sun is naturally, if you're doing like a hard sunlight, maybe it's because it's got like sharp shadows. So it's weird to see warm light that's really soft. I'm not really sure why, but it just always looks a little weird. So I just like to do like nice warm shadows with like cool lighting. I'm not, not an expert in everything. I just, just some of the basics. We'll call this, wait, what did I call these? I call these uh skin yeah we'll just call it skin skin local shadows and then we'll set this to multiply and invert and now i'm gonna start shading took so long okay let's do it i like to just go in and just grab a soft brush i used to work a lot with just doing dissolve um, this is the wrong resolution, so it's going to look a little bit weird. But that's how I did a lot of my, like, grainy effect. Like this. And I would just, like, paint in the masks. Oh, and, uh, by the way, clip. So I put all these local layers into here. You know, you can also do these individually on, you know, if I took a shadow layer and I just want to put it on top of each individual one all the way down, you can do that too. Just make sure that you clip it. So control G you know, clip it right down onto them so that they, so they don't uh, go past the border. Cause you know, if you do this, you're gonna be like, it's gonna get messy. But control G puts it right onto the layers alpha. And then you don't have to worry about coloring outside the lines, you know. Creepy and cute, which I find really funny. How do you go about approaching humor to your work? Oh man. I. I never thought of it as humorous. I was a very, I'm a very serious person. Uh, I, I think like with the, with the, uh, I, I definitely get drawn to like these little narrative moments, which, I, I don't know. It's, it's like little things that just kind of feel like little weird. You feel something like a little weird and off, and it's just like fun to kind of like edge that border a bit, and you kind of go like. Yeah, like I don't go full 100% cute and I don't go full 100% creepy. I just kind of go like, I got like, I like to tickle it. Like, you know, that sounds weird, but like, you know, just kind of like edge it a little bit and just be like, yeah, just just a, a little bit of something just to give it some flavor, kind of like a diversity of flavors into it and making that, uh, making a little bit of a complex, I don't know, if you think of like food, right? You go like, you you, it's kind of nice to have like flavors that are layered. So it's just kind of like the same thing. You're going like, okay, I like to like kind of layer little bits of narrative into it that just kind of make you read into it and go, oh, this is like maybe from first read, it's like, oh, that's really cute. And then you go, yeah, it's like a little, it's a little weird. Okay. You know, and that's like, that's just kind of what I get drawn to. It just makes it a little bit more fun. So yeah, personally, that's just how I am. Yeah. So let's get shading right into it though. So click on the mask. I'm gonna make it like a very top light heavy. And don't worry about like separating all the limbs. We'll get to that in a little bit. You know, just maybe do something real simple right now, just to like get this blocked in. I think like, yeah, maybe it would just be like a nice top light. Here's like a little moment where like, yeah, if you do like lighting and you like cover the face with lighting, it kind of adds like an, omin omin an ominous nature, like where you're covering the eyes a bit, where you feel like the head is like in shadow and it's the top light. Nice, get got, getting like a nice little bit of like rim on the top. It just kind of like adds like a little bit of a flavor. I feel like 
people in lighting, they kind of, like, you know, a lot of illustrators, I think when they paint with lighting, they kind of go for the default. But there's, like, so many, like, weird things that you can paint with, like, like some interesting lighting uh, setups that you could play with. Like, I was doing, um, let's do, I was, like, painting, like, a, a dog and a cat, like, a I imagine like a Jap, like a what do you call it, like um, like a police, and they're like, there's like somebody's flash photography, and they're like, they're gonna, sh you know, they're pointing the camera at them, and they're like, no, get the camera out of their face. So I was like sketching this out, just I thought this would be fun. I was gonna originally paint this, but I was like, this is gonna take too long to do, but I'm gonna still probably paint it. And I was like, you know, it'd be cool to get some like crazy filmic look to it, you know, get this like crazy top you know, this, this crazy street lighting, getting these, like, bokeh lights in the back, getting this cat that's, like, this, it's, like, definitely, like, this dog is the stupid police officer, and the cat is, like, the rat or something, where the cat is a dirty police officer, and it's just kind of hiding in the shadows of this, like, dog, like, you get the little cat shadow, and I'm like, that could just feels like a fun little moment they definitely look like they're these cute animals coming from a crime scene though now nah, that was just like something that i was like enjoying painting for a bit i'm gonna probably like when i get some time i'm gonna like make a nice little painting of it so we'll see it in the future hopefully so let's keep painting let's go like this Paint along. If anybody's painting along, that's great. Oh. My girlfriend's home. What? Oh, I'm live streaming. Oh. <laughs> she just came from work. So, it's going to keep shading like this. And then, I think, I mean, let's get a little bit like that. I think if it's, let's do a, just a direct, a direct top light source. Keep it simple for right now. And now because I separated all these layers, I can create selections. So if like, what's nice with, you know, getting shading is like, maybe you want some hard edges though. So that's essentially what I can do now. So I can say create like this and then Q, Command I, Q, invert my selection. And now I can paint and get these like, shadings like this. I'm gonna press command H just to like so you guys can see it but you'll see like now I have like a hard edge just like that also I just realized I'm painting with a grainy brush which um yeah I'll just go with it I wasn't gonna I don't really paint with a grainy brush anymore nowadays but I'll just keep going with it. I feel like that's what a lot of people really into is like that texture. It's, this might not be the right resolution. Yeah, it's close enough resolution. It should be fine. So let's do that again. Let's grab like the feet and then I can command. So I'd say control alt to do negative. You see on my layers and then I can just go up on the layers and select each one. And that just essentially Kept the selection so i'm not going into this like right up into here and like destroying all my work here i'm keeping some nice hard edges while keeping some soft ones and then i'm going to do a little tight of a brush like this just to get like some nice that's like a cast shadow now like yeah it's like a cast shadow like that all right press command command d to Look for anywhere that can be kind of like anywhere that can have these little nice moments of shading. I don't know, I get like really into that. Like this little moment of shadow is like kind of nice. Uh let's see. Let's just do alt, 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 alt. It's actually key. Good enough.
Hmm. You know what? I'm going to go back to saying normal. Filter, blur. Reason being is I think there's going to be some moments where I'm going to want to get more painterly and I'm going to have to not be using a grainy brush. I'll just do my grain. And it's nice to have the grain pre. I think it probably gives a different vibe, but I'm just like going to be lazy and do... Let's just blur the shit out of this for right now. It's fine for right now. And then I'll do the... Add the I'll do the add the grain and post. You know, all that lovely texture is all gone now. I want to mix this part a little bit easier. I mean, if I'm like going to dissolve it, is the purest of grain. It's the, I know it's the it's the best in a lot of ways, and I've kind of realized, like now I've been getting into photography, and I'm like, oh my god, like now I see like grain will never die. I don't I don't want to jinx it. It's just like it just looks. Sometimes it can just look timeless if you because it's like in photography also, it just like looks great. I never use like really textured brushes because I'm just like Photoshop just I don't know it they don't have it totally right um like for a lot of things you know I think it's like good for certain things to get some nice texture but I just can never get it to be like totally 100 percent I do like I'm <laughs> as somebody who's like sells those like those marker sets which I do actually enjoy uh playing around with um, I don't use them for like my actual like painting process, but I, I stumbled on like making them and I was like, cause I was just like goofing around, play with them. I was like, these like look really nice. I'm going to like play around and I got really into them. And to me, those were like something that I just felt really proud of. And I was like, okay, you know, I really do like the, they, be, they have their moments for things that would work, but like for like rendering out stuff I, they'd probably be pretty hard to use and make look really natural let's do that and then i'm gonna hide this right now we don't need that right now it's like being distracting you can see some little sharp images Oh, there's one more thing. There we go. Let's do the tail and then alt click. Part of me wishes I did do the grain now, but I'm also like too late oh well um and then what i can do is i can check i can if i feel like i can't really see like the levels on my screen i can also press like alt and just see like everywhere that i've been shading on the on the uh my girlfriend's squirting ketchup everywhere okay god damn Okay, so yeah, this looks, I think it looks fine. So we do shadows, let's do the next layer, which will be, let's do, like that, and we'll get, this will be called AO, so ambient occlusion. And ambient occlusion is essentially the crevices where no light hits. So it's kind of like the darkest form. So we can go pretty, we can go pretty dark. I don't want to go to like totally black because I'm still using multiply and it will already go pretty dark and it can get a little overwhelming. It, ambient occlusion is a very subtle thing to use. So like... Oh. So it would be like... 
let's do it like that. And then you just darken a little bit of those crevices. That might not be, actually, let's not do that run right there. Let's do like a little bit more of a, the place that would actually be hit by it. So let's go here. Right where the dinosaur's foot is. Let's do this one now. Yeah, and then here's a nice plot for like some ambient inclusion. It's like a little bit of a crease. Sometimes it's hard to tell which direction it should go. If it should go. I should do the stomach selection like this and get it more like oh that doesn't feel right here you know what we can also do we can obviously change all the local layers like this but let's just go and create a new solid color layer and look at that Oh, here's the here's how it's procedural. Now look at we can make the dinosaur any color we want. Amazing. You want to do like patterns on top? It all interacts with the lighting. So like, instead of like painting the patterns and all these like details into the shadows, this is the destructive, non-destructive work, you know, workflow. If you paint into the shadows, like on the same layer, but then you want to change the pattern or you want to change the shadows, you're destroying one of them. So it's like keeping them separate. You don't destroy the other one. And then you can always change things and it just makes your life not not hell let's make them a little bit let's make them a little bit lighter make them green for right now so we can like properly i think it's a little dark on my screen okay let's do keep using these masks as selections if it was would the pattern layer look better if it was in multiply or do you leave them normal can you you can use whatever it's so for example if you have like let's just do this i'm gonna, I'm gonna get too, super sidetracked you have an app if you have an apple like this and it's red and then you have like all those little details of an apple like that you know you don't have to like say those details are like multiplied on top. You can choose whatever blending mode, you know, you want as long as they're below the shadow layer, because the shadows would then treat everything consistently on top. So if I say like multiply like that, like that, it treats everything equally and it's just placed on top. And that's really it. You don't need to think of them as like multiply or not. It's all it's totally fine. Let's do go back to my soft brush. And it's there's the neck. Okay. Looks like I was missing some.
Oops, don't want to lose that. Let's just fill in some of this ambient occlusion. A little bit like that. And then I think the that's just a little bit more that we should probably do. Let's do How many people are on stream right now? 53 people. Thanks guys for all coming along and, and chilling and watching right now. I just realized that I'm really zoned in. Hi Sandro. Oh Moose, hey. Greetings from DC. Moose is a is an animator. A Pakistani animator. Uh uh, currently working at a, uh, sorry, I forgot the name of the place that you're working at, but you're, you're new to the industry though. So check out his work, give a plug. Give a little bit of shading like that. And then let's do the head and then we'll call the ambient occlusion done. I like to, I've been realizing that some of these, uh, I like to go and take a smudge brush. Like if I want to like blend some of these hard edges, let's do something like this smudge 95. I think that's probably fine. And just kind of grab it and just kind of do a little wiggle with a smudge brush, like a soft one that's like something like 95% and just do like little mini wiggles and it'll just kind of like smooth things out a bit. Because sometimes with these selections, it can be really hard edges. And then let's do... That looks pretty good. And then let's do the, let's do some bounce light. Now, so I'll do another layer and we'll just, what I do for bounce light is I'll say, make it the same color as the background itself or whatever is the light, the environment that's being bounced on. And then just like knock down its opacity a little bit and clip it on. And we'll call this, I'll say AL ambient light. And then do the same thing. And what I'm doing is essentially since it's top lit, I'm going to have light come down and then bounce back up to the dinosaur. Um, you know, doesn't need to be gray because if we, if we're illuminating the shadows, we could also make it like a more saturated color, which we maybe I'll do later. It might look a little bit better. Um, but you'll see. I do like a little. It's going to look like a metallic dinosaur, I just realized. And then do, let's do the legs. And you see these little things, like if you look at the leg, it kind of goes down. That's more facing the ground right there. And then, yeah, it's just like a facing. Sometimes you just got to play with it and then be like, realize if it's, if it's, uh, if it looks wrong, it's probably wrong. That's just how it is sometimes. Like that looks a little wrong right now. 
It's because it, uh, I know why. It's because it looks, the leg is diagonal, so it should be actually more on the bottom side of this side. Let's do a little bit like that. And then I think this is still too strong, so let's just knock it down. And then let's do the tail. And then just control alt to subtract. And then Yeah, like that. And again, like probably do a little smoothing. Just to like soften those edges as it goes so it's not like a hard transition. And then let's do just this one, subtract again. Probably adds ambient inclusion in there, so it's probably not going to be too much light because it's being pinched so much into the leg like that. Yeah, it's all about subtlety. It's like close enough. Let's bring that shadow a bit, and then let's. You know what? Let's. You know what I don't have is I don't have a mouth on him. So let's like just lasso in a mouth right real quickly and then I'm going to go to his, I think this is, now oh, this one's his head. So let's go here, bring new fair, just fill it in, command G. So I have this selection now and I can use that selection whenever I want. So it's like saving my selections so I can go back in. So if I use a lasso tool, people use the lasso tool, like maybe you will use it once and then you know press command d and then it's like gone forever versus if you save it like you fill it in now you have it saved forever just like hide the layer essentially so now i can go if i ever want to make changes in that lasso selection i can just simply go in and just make those changes let's press command h to hide the selection it's still it's still active it's just being hidden That's pretty good. Mandy, and then I think like let's do a little bit of shadow underneath the eyes because it's being, his eyes are going to be kind of like pressed in because it's top light. The shadows would be on the top like this. Yeah, and then we'll do like a little bit of a maybe let's do like a little bit of like a little bit of the ridge is just being hit by a little bit of the lighting. What tablet am I using? I'm using a Cintiq Wacom 17 inch. It's like a tiny one. Um, what I've noticed is that I wish I got like a little bit of, I mean, I think I, I, cause I work professionally as an illustrator uh, and I work with colors a lot. I personally would probably have scaled up and got one that's color accurate. Cause I have to use my monitor up at top to like use essentially what's called a window like navigator, which is, uh, uh, which I, oh, I already have it open. Oh yeah. Cause I have it right here. Yeah. So I put this on my, my monitor that's color accurate. Cause otherwise I realize I work really low contrast. Um, but it's, it's a Cintiq. It's a very good, it's a very good, um, tablet to paint off of. Definitely, definitely classic one that I think a lot of people would typically recommend. I don't know, maybe people, maybe some people view it as kind of like the Adobe, where they kind of hate it in some, some ways, because it's so popular. Oh man, he's like so, he's like such a sad boy now. Let's get like a little dimple in there. These dimples are always, these dimples are always the bane of my existence. The bane of my existence. Because I can never... 
came totally looking clean. Wiggle, 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 like that. And let's do, I can always do this and just see, now I can see where it's like kind of messy. Yeah, close enough. Close enough. It don't matter. And then let's do the... Now we have all these. Oh yeah, we have all these. Let's... You know what? Because... Let's drag this one up on top. I'm not... I'm keeping it on the bottom, but I'm just going to drag it on top. And then I'm going to like... Kind of blend in the color of this. Into my to my dinosaur. That's looking real dirty right now. Like that. And let's keep, just keep that selection so we can kind of not affect some of the See how that looks. It's not bad. Let's just change it to any color we want. It's cute. Let's get right into the. Oh, we, we have a little bit more of this bounce light we have to paint in. Maybe a little bit under the eyes. Just ever so slightly. Oh, shit. Torrin's here, too. Yo, Torrin. Torrin's an amazing touch designer. Uh, touch designer artist. Uh, you guys should look up touch designer if you if you guys... Uh, he also has a lot of tutorials on YouTube. Uh, it's amazing how realistic. Yeah, it doesn't actually take... Yeah, Ben Ben made a point about, like, it's it doesn't really need to... You don't really actually need to add too much to, like, really show form. It's like sometimes it only takes like a few strokes and you're like you've essentially solved it. Once you like can break down that everything is just essentially your base color, your local color, shadows, uh light like your highlights, and then you know your bounce light, you're pretty much solved. Oh, and ambient inclusion. You pretty much just like solved almost everything, you know, with the exception of those complex materials that get more tricky like i said if you have to render glass that's like a that's another little another another method i always like do different ways just trying to figure that one out oh yeah since it's so glossy i wonder if like i just did that stroke i wonder if like making it feel like it's like a glossy kind of makes it feel a little bit like glossy or lips kind of adds like emphasizing that edge a little bit just kind of gives it that little bit of like it's like those little details where you just go like that just really kind of just emphasized just a little bit of something and makes it have a little bit extra flavor. It's like those little edges. Let's see, this one would be would be done this one? No, it would be. I think it's being a little bit into that weird territory where it can't tell if it's ambient occlusion or top light. Also, just realize how I'm gonna just create, select my selection, and then keep just boost it up a bit, see if it like shows a little bit more. And you know what? This I think my shadows are getting a little light too, so let's just like darken the shadows a bit. I make the eyes black right now so they can like mm, too dark. Just make them so they're a little bit more visible. This is where I'm saying my screen is like so low contrast. I have to like look up just to see like how 
how uh, the values are because values values go are the most important thing in painting when it comes to the composition it's not the colors colors are like a nice secondary thing that adds like that flavor to it but it's it's really it's the uh it's the lighting that really does a lot of the heavy lifting so you i think that's why i like a lot of artists teach to do do black and white first and then do coloring on top um like i said that just personally doesn't fit with me but i get like why that is a, a great a great method like how long i'm spending just like doing this like little bit of mouth it's like sometimes that happens it's like i think it's just very going like why does it look slightly off it's so dark in my room i can't see Doing that. Yeah, close enough. Close enough. That's all that matters. Because it is a quick little live stream that's not going to be quick anymore. Ooh, let's get those spikes shaded. Select them, and now let's start shading. Oh man, we're going to get some cast shadows on here too. They're going to look real nice. Let's do something like that. And then we'll do like the spikes are kind of like a half tone. I wonder if I can like can I wiggle it? No, I can't really wiggle it. Little shadows like eh. and Q and I. Q is a quick mask, and then invert it so I can grab the selection outside of them. I might be going a little quick for some people. I realize that. I don't know if any is anybody like painting along. I'd be curious to know. Be pretty cool if anybody is. I feel like it'd be pretty hard to follow along with this though at the moment. Let's see, why is that? Sh I see the stroke right here. Ah, yeah. Oh, how often do you find yourself sketching when running errands? What do you usually like to sketch on the, or do you like to sketch on the go? I I don't like sketching, honestly. It's like, I I did get like these new, um, these, these books. Let's see if I, I have to like move my camera a bit. I got these like books that have like these color pages. I think they're called, I got like, it was like typical like Instagram advertisement, ugly books, find them out. You know, they have like a crazy selection of colors and they would definitely be some fun things to draw on but i think i might i'm going to be flying to korea and japan soon for a, a wedding so i might do some sketching there but normally like just like uh i'm so used to doing like sketching for clients and i just like i'm like oh my god i just want to get into the painting i like painting so much oh uh yeah. Catch up sounds freaky. Fuck. I didn't yeah. Didn't know if those ketchup sounds were coming on the on the camera or not. Um cool, let's keep getting some of these some of these shadows. And then I'll do this do the specular. This is definitely gonna be I don't know if I wanna complete this by tonight. We might just do like a Just might do like something. All the cast shadows. Those are technically correct. Nathan John, great illustrator. Oh, I didn't know they were actually from an uh, an illustrator. Oh shit. Uh, yeah, they're pretty cool. 
Um, I also got like some neon colored colored pencils, which would be fun to color with them. John Contino. I'll try to I'll look back at the chat and and try to find his uh his Instagram or something. Let's do like some. Some shadows like this. I don't know if that's like too, that might be too distracting. Let's just see if I can turn this down a little bit and then just yeah, that, that kind of works. I just do that and wiggle it to kind of blend it in. He's from New York, too. Oh, shit. I wonder what neighborhood he's in. I don't know how, like, how established is he. Is he, like, one of those old, old illustrators that are, like, super successful then? Or is he like a really young guy? He's like, or I say young, but I'm like 30 years old. That's how old I am. I'm like, I consider myself young, but I forget that I'm actually probably not as young as I used to be. Forget that Gen Z is the, the new generation now. Let's really soften these shadows because I don't want it to get too distracting. Here's where it gets like a little destructive because I'm like now carving back into my shadows. And oh, I just realized also, am I like zooming in a ton? I I feel like. A lot of illustrators probably don't zoom in as often as I do. I think it's really helpful, but it might be like terrible for streaming because people just get probably nauseous from it. I think that looks pretty, that looks pretty good. And then let's do like a little bit, get a little bit of, I don't want to spend too long on that one. And then do like a little bit of that underbelly. Like that. And then. It's almost like a glossy looking dinosaur. It's kind of fun. So just depending on the light, like how you paint the shadows, like if they're really soft, if they're really, like if I turn the saturation, or not the saturation, if I turn this down, it's going to look way less glossy. It's going to look almost like a, it's almost like it's like a marshmallow, kind of matte. But then if I turn it up, it looks like, almost like, how do you describe that like plasticky? It would have to have the same on top for the specular though. But yeah, that's that's kind of crazy. Now let's do yeah, let's let's turn that down to like something like that for right now. And then now let's do the direct light. So I'm gonna do the top light and I'm gonna just put a nice cool tone like this, and then I'm gonna say screen. And then again, I'm gonna call this direct light on top. And then we're going to do the same thing now. And I use the screen mode for it. And go like this. And then now I'm just going to start painting the top of it. This ridge is on the top is the most 
upward facing to the to the light. So we'll do that. Do the same for this one too. Skin is also not super specular. Not that this is necessarily skin, but I guess it is flesh in a way. Something like that for right now. Yeah, it's like it's like fine. You know what? Because this is so much in shadow, I kind of wonder. I'll turn the ambient down quite a bit, and then I'm gonna like go in and start carving out a little bit of the shadows where they're like maybe just getting a little bit hit from the top, but like just to kind of like define those forms a little bit so not like super flat. Like how it's barely visible, like just just enough. It's amazing. And because I don't have my ambient occlusion on that same layer, I'm not destroying any of it. That's how I get so neat with the shit. Like just like a little bit to add a little bit of uh like it's it's getting a little bit of that skylight or something on top. And let's, now we did that. Let's carve some of this ambient inclusion. We don't want to overlap the ambient inclusion with the top light at all. Yeah, 216 in Berlin. Don't worry, this will be oh, like uh yeah, this people who are like in Europe do not hold up for me unless you guys are naturally night owls. Um I was gonna try to do like a very simple stream where I was just gonna paint like a circle and then just shade it and then be like, here you go, do this. But then I was like, you know, it'd be more fun if we like painted something that's like legit. And then now I'm like, oh shit. Classic. Maybe I'll just do live streams like this where it's just really chill though and no pressure. Oh, here's, yeah, this is like these little fun moments that you do. It's like just throwing on like a, these little, it's like when people do like the specular in the eye or like the nose and you're just like really just like these little moments that just feel like you're like, oh yeah, that, that feels like I'm like getting like this, this sense of detail in it. <laughs> sense. just just try it with like a sphere like like I, I i feel like people should just like literally just go and just take like a circle and just you know just literally try shading like that just go like circle and then make one that's like a square you know stack a circle on a square be like okay how is the cast shadow you know being affected you know kind of thing and just do that try it out do something simple, put some googly eyes on it, whatever you want. And then you'll be like, oh, that's not like that bad. It's actually, it's actually like super, like if you do it enough, you just kind of go like, it's, you, you kind of get like how it's like kind of a basic process actually. Not something that needs to be super intimidating. These spikes, though, are being really intimidating, though, because they are so small and delicate, and I do not want to. I am being real sloppy with them. Let's just hide them so we can see them better, so we can see how the shadows are. Yeah, let's, let's just kind of fuzz them up a bit. That's probably fine. And then let's do, let's get some of this, carve some of that out. To get some of these folds, maybe we'll do like some little strokes, kind of like zigzag in it. Kind of make it feel like the skin is, is kind of being pinched right there. And then do the same for a little bit of the shadow too. Just 
to I kind of wonder if I can like do a little bit of like pushing and shoving with this give it like hmm it was like little it's not bad kind of an interesting like way to add folds hmm. I'm figuring some of these things out as I go I feel like that's kind of the joy of painting is you, you don't have to like have a solid basic system down for the entire thing. Oh yeah, I feel just like, let's get like a little bit of sharpness right there. And just kind of fuzz that up a bit maybe. S like that. Did anybody see the solar eclipse? I feel like everybody probably went out. I don't know how I hear ambulances, and I feel like there must be like a lot of people who probably looked up into the sun and the, the hospitals are like got packed with people looking up into the sun or something like that something crazy i don't know i feel like we would have heard it on the news though so maybe it wasn't that bad but it's pretty cool pretty cool being able to witness that because i didn't get to see it in 2017 when was the last time it actually happened Ooh, let's get some little wrinkles right here Flow with the fish, flow with the tail. Little, yeah, it's like subtle enough. It's like those little subtle details that just kind of like, they're like, it just kind of really makes it feel more alive. This is looking, this and the inclusion is looking wrong. Now that I'm like seeing it, how it actually is. look up into my top monitor and see hmm. yeah and you know what let's do some i think the well, let's do some like little details i have this one brush maybe i'll like give it to people for free when i can it's just like it's like a little brush like this and i just use it for like um some detail work you know, I'm going to hide this and just duplicate it in case I don't like how it's coming out. But I can, like, be like, oh, I want, like, some scratch marks or something like that. I can just go like that. And then it, like, kind of makes, like, little details. wrong direction make sure you paint it in the wrong the right the right direction though kind of looks like dinosaur like almost like scars or something like in a battle cute little dinosaur don't get into battles okay you know i'm going to use it just to like paint it's kind of nice to paint some hard edges i should have actually used this a little bit for like painting these hard edges redefine some of those Oh yeah, that's that's kind of nice to throw that, that kind of back in. And then 
let's do right here. Let's do again, carve out some of these shadows just a little bit on the, turn out the opacity down a little bit. Um, oh, that looks flashy now. See, that looks like, that looks like a dinosaur leg all of a sudden. It looks like it's got like that, it's like the skin's like overlapping on it now. Kind of going for the, you go for the little pinches and you just kind of drag it out. Let's do the same for the ambient inclusion. Wrong direction. Okay, there. Ah, bye, Liam. Thanks for thanks for chilling for this long. Honestly, I think I was only planning on doing like a. Actually, it's only been an hour and a half. Holy shit! I thought this was like, I thought it was like twelve in the morning already. I guess I'm being way quicker than I thought I was. But I was gonna do just like a simple. I'll do like if I do this again, I'll probably have to do like a condensed version. That's just literally a ball and sphere, but it's nice to like get some people just to show them just this basic uh it's a long a long version at least a, uh like a nice kickoff i feel like a boring kickoff of just a, bo a ball and sphere like a, a sphere and a cube or something would be kind of boring maybe later if i if i keep doing this i'll just do it as a casual stream Yeah, I get those like those little wrinkles are nice to have actually. Let's do with some ambient inclusion too. Turn on the opacity, don't want it too hard. Yeah, that's this actually looks pretty nice. It's like these little these little moments. Do shadows. Yeah, thanks for thanks for chilling with and just uh, how do you say your name? Emily? Is it just is it Emily? Okay. Well, thanks for thanks for just hanging and just like listening. It's actually kind of hard to just talk and and I know people probably do this while they're working. I don't know how many people are in the art industry, you know, on a stream right now, or if they're like you know more like to do it just as like a hobby, you know um you know there's a lot of people that work like nine to five they might work uh you know in a cafe or something like that and this is like they're coming back from a shift or something like that and they just want to listen to some stuff you know so i think it's for like everyone but you know have a good night you know thanks i'm i'm glad that it's it's coming out as it is and this is this is only like a small portion it's it's nice to get these little details in Thank you, thank you. But yeah, this is nice little, nice little bits right here to, let's get to look specular on the eyes too, just to get that, get that in. Copy, paste. Nobody likes sad, sad little black eyes. But have a good night for anybody who's, uh, who's, who is uh, on but have to go because they're late in Europe or something, so. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep going and keep the stream going though. Let's go back to the soft. And then let's do Oh yeah, this is like that shadow is not looking. Let's get a nice sharper cast shadow on that. Yeah, it's looking. I've been working on client work, story brain while watching you in the background. That's honestly ideal. I wish I could, uh, I wish I had the 
radio voice or something or like could keep the rambles going i'm like now zoned in myself just just painting this along also getting dark here too so it's like i'm naturally feeling like i need to be quiet i feel like i'm gonna wake up the neighbors You know, and I can because I have I can just simply yeah, let's just simply do that. This morning. This is not totally correct still. I get, I know I'm like probably annoyingly nitpicky on some of these things, but like they just, they just bother me sometimes. It's just like the lighting is just slightly off, and I go, oh, I need to fix it. But that's kind of the fun of it, honestly. It's just getting into the zone of things. Are you going to give the dinosaur some toenails? I honestly, oh man, I should probably do that. Yeah. Uh, not tonight. No, I think I'm going to, I'm going to like do a, some tattoo work on it and then I'll, I'll, oh man, I don't want to keep it going the whole night because I would probably post this. Mm. Eh, we'll see how far it goes. I don't know. I'll decide when I get to the point, but I'll, I'll do toenails later. Yeah. If it if it come if I have time. Let's make sure. Oops, I just unclicked the link. Ooh, that is that needs to be fixed a bit. These neck folds are just, there's these little, just those little moments where you're just like, fuck, that's just like the bane of my existence. Just a huge pain right now. Never overlap your direct light with your shadows because then things will get muddy. Always have your shadows, your shadow layer separate from your your direct light layer. Uh, so it goes shadows, your base color, and then your direct light. The moment direct light just directly goes over the shadows, it gets really muddy because you're losing your local colors. You don't want that. Let's see though, ambient light. Look up in my monitor. <laughs> Haven't pressed Control Save. Oh, I mean, I got I got auto recovery, but you, you, it's fine. It's fine. It's honestly like if I lose this, also like it's not the end of the world. 
this is just like a little fun project to do with the stream. Oh, you know what I'm just realizing? I should like these tails look so smooth because like why does this have like mm, this is gonna be I'm doing it very poorly right now. Command Z, Command Z, Command Z. Think of a different way to do it. Get the get the little bone ridges up. No, that didn't look good. Eh, I'll just do that later. It's not the priority. Let's do tattoos now, though. If anybody wants to learn how to do the tattoos, this is just like a one layer thing. And I said this kind of somewhere before where it's like, if you want to draw, um, let me sleep these. If you want to draw underneath the shadows. So I'm literally just going to make a single layer for the tattoos and it will just like, look like tattoos. It's amazing. Um, let's change the dinosaur to be like a little bit lighter. So we can, oh crap, that's, I'm seeing that that's not shaded. That's gonna bother me. I gotta fix that right now. And then I'll do the, I'll do the thing then. It'll be quick. Let's do it quickly. Um, it's kind of sloppy. Okay, close enough. Okay, so to do tattoos, make sure. So at least it, you know, let's call this one local because it's clipped down. Can even delete it. This is the local color that we have. We can make it any color we want. To kind of make it like a little fleshy. That's not fleshy. that's just that's just brown. And that one's just like clay. Because I haven't added subsurface scattering to anything yet. But that's fine for right now. Let's do this and then we'll say uh solid color. And then I'm gonna add like a like a kind of like a dark color that's like in a cool tone range. And set it to multiply because tattoos essentially kind of are like multiplied on top of skin and then let's call it tattoos and then what we'll do you'll, you'll see i have my own brush for it just to like oops go on the mask so i have my own brush for it um that's kind of just like a slight it's literally just a soft brush. That's just kind of fade. It's like it's a little soft is all. That's literally all it is. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna say, add an outer glow to it. And it, we're gonna essentially make it look like the tattoo is bleeding into the skin a bit. So it kind of has like a slight fade to it. And I'm just gonna like make it look like Kind of like Sharpie on a wet napkin, like the it starts to have this blue ink quality. Okay, let's see how big the change the glow size. Spread, that's way too big. Let's see something like make it like a kind of a fresh type. Faded, but not too faded. And then we'll do fill. Let's turn the fill down a bit. And then, yeah, I think that's, that should be, I think that'll be good. I can probably, yeah, let's try it. Let's try this out and see how this looks. Let's go get some of these tattoos on him. And I'm just literally just going to draw it now. Make sure it kind of follows the form. 
I might have to get a little bit lighter with the tattoos, but you know. Crazy. Sick tattoo, bro. Let's do like I think the asteroid should be a little bit higher. I like one of those like really crummy stick and pokes that look like every Bushwick barista be pretty sick to have. Just like looks like a child's drawing. Oh yeah. And then I think I'm gonna add some surf surf yeah, I mean there could be more tattoos, but for the sake of this, let's keep it simple. Maybe just, maybe like do some weird. Just filling up the space a bit. And then let's do the subsurface scattering. So I have on here, I'm gonna go and say solid color. Go down pretty dark, do color dodge. This will make it look like sun also. And then turn its opacity down. And then turn the local color to something more like a gray. And this is gonna be called subsurface scattering. And then we'll do a, another soft brush. And then just go right on just where the highlights are. Might be the wrong color, but we'll. Yeah, it's a bit wrong on the colors, but it's okay. It's getting real, it's getting real muddy dark. So let's change this actually to like a. Ooh, that's sick. A blue dinosaur. Yeah, that's it. Maybe with like a little bit of like color variation, like some, say multiply, add some, almost like some blush to them. And I'm just gonna like kind of paint in these like flesh tones, like very subtly. Let's do a, let's do a hue saturation and just take whatever's its base color down there and just darken it. So it'll take, so that way if I change the color, it will, it will change the color along with it too. I mean, I guess I just said multiply, but yeah, whatever. No big deal. Maybe I will change it to like a, a color. Actually, yeah, maybe I should change it to a color. Let's do grab the tail. And then let's do this again. Let's... Small color, let's see what color, make it something drastic so we can really see it. Hmm. It's got some like little spots that kind of blend. Oh, it's kind of fun. Just like little little dots that kind of blend, like the top of a dinosaur. I'm not gonna make it like this vibrant orange though.
Base color. Whoa. That's weird. That's crazy looking. No, it's like a dinosaur with a blue back, but like a pink, almost like a hippo. It kind of has like a hippo color where it's like the bottom is like pink, which kind of makes me want to do that. Like take this. Yeah. Hmm. As high as for maybe just make it like a toy though. And then let's add some grain, I think, to the top. Oh, actually, let's add the shadow and then grain, and we'll probably much, we'll just call it quits for today. We don't have to do the, don't have to do a nice background or anything. Maybe I'll change the background, the dinosaur color. Um, post stream and get it like something that looks a little bit more of like a color that I like, or like I'll finish the background after the stream's done. Okay. Go make it a nice color. Do an ambient occlusion. Bounce light. Pretty bright. And on the cast shadow, and then I'll teach, I'll throw some a color LUT over the top, which if anybody doesn't know what that is, a color LUT is a color lookup table essentially just adds color grading to your work, which I think everybody should do when they, uh, when they paint. It just adds like doing some post-processing to your work will like really make it go a long way. And do a little smudge. Oops. That's pretty sick. Smudge, much, much wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Just giving that shadow to feel. You want it to be sharper when it gets closer to the edges of things, and as it falls off, it essentially get, it loses its sharpness. Let's do that and go 
cool. And now for the, this is the part where it just feels like it'll like really glow up. We'll do some post-processing. We'll do some like curved adjustments. I feel like right now it's like a little, it's a little losing some of that. It could, we can also boost up some of the ambient light. It's like a little bit losing some of that form. Oh yeah. That kind of helped it a bit. Now it feels like it's really becoming almost bulbous. So like that. And then we'll get some. Learn some little blush a little bit more. Kind of make it feel like it's a hippopotamus or something. I don't feel like it should have blushed as well. Cool. And then we'll do a color lookup table, which a color lookup table in your adjustments panel will just kind of do some nice post processing. And I just love to do this part because it this adds some nice little bit of extra oomph to like whatever you make. So it's you can essentially load any dot cube file. You'll see that like right there. So I'm loading one called Contrail right now, which is way too intense. With that, you have to probably like boost up its bounce light way more. But yeah. That feels like a dinosaur now. That feels like a proper toy dinosaur. Kind of rubbery. I feel like that looks pretty authentic to the it kind of has a fleshy quality to it at the same time. And then I'll just add some noise. I like to add noise by simply just going on top and just pressing G with the fill color of, so we go like, you see black, just change it to black 50, fill it, filter, noise, add noise, keep it something like 12, and then we'll say soft light. I just do it to add that like kind of grainy texture to it. But I think that is everything that I would teach you though. So essentially it's just taking that direct light on top, going down, uh, keep making sure your direct light doesn't mix with your shadows. Your ambient light is reflected into your shadows, which then uh yeah your midtones keep it nice and saturated too or your uh yeah just make sure that you don't have this direct light in the shadows mixing so that you're don't get too muddled but that's about it you know i'm gonna leave it as a good night this was a long recording so thanks for everybody who stuck around i'm probably gonna like maybe paint this up a bit or i don't know if i'll post it or not but thank you for everybody who just chilled i realized it's like almost 9 p.m uh it would be nice to get that little background in it but damn damn look at that that's gonna be hard to get in in time so <laughs> should have chose an easier one thanks though for everyone sticking around though have a good night
thanks for the support. I'm really glad that people actually came and, and showed. I really appreciate it. You guys are all amazing. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Bye. Thanks. Thank you for all staying. Bye.